So, introductory neuroscience and neuro instrumentation uh, voltage clamp demo. So, hello, uh, welcome to a demo on the voltage clamp experiments of uh, Alan Hodgkin and Andrew Huxley. This technique was crucial in understanding the underlying mechanisms of action potential generation. So, this demo is a complement to the lecture on action potentials. So, once again, the software you are using uh, for this demo is Meta Neuron. Uh, it was uh, created by uh, Professors Newman and Newman, the University of Minnesota uh, and published in the Journal of Undergrad Neuroscience Education June uh, in 2013. It is a free standalone program that can be used without restriction and we can conduct neurophysiology, cellular neurophysiology experiments in silico. It works on Windows, Mac and also on Linux via Wine. Okay. So, uh, just to uh, uh, reiterate, the neuronal parameters, example sodium and potassium concentrations, the, their equilibrium potentials and the conductances can easily be modified. A virtual stimulator injects single or double current pulses into the neuron. Uh, responses are displayed graphically and can be measured with the cursor. And uh, families of traces can be easily generated and viewed in a rotatable 3D plot. Uh, just to remind you, uh, this is the uh, schematic of a voltage clamp um, experiment. So, you have the axon and you have two electrodes, you know intracellular electrodes. One is the voltage electrode which senses voltage and the other is current electrode to inject current. So, uh, just to remind you, the uh, voltage, uh, the resting membrane potential is, you know, uh, let us say minus 60 millivolts. So, we can change and hold, clamp the voltage at different um, uh, points like minus 60, minus 50, minus 40, so on and so forth. And uh, when we hold it at this uh, uh, level, the voltage at this level, we inject uh, a current so that it stays at this level. Okay. So, it is called uh, the voltage uh, you know at which the axon is held is called the command voltage. So, uh, to uh, compensate uh, for uh, the membrane conductance and the ionic currents, you inject an appropriate amount of current at a particular voltage and uh, then you can work out the relationship uh, between the current needed uh, at a particular voltage. Okay. This is what uh, Hodgkin and Huxley did. They used a squid giant axon which if you remember is about 1 millimeter in diameter that is a 1000 mu microns and uh, it was uh, easy, uh, relatively easy, nothing is easy, it was relatively easy to insert uh, uh, the current electrode and the voltage electrode into such a big preparation. Okay. So, this demo, uh, uh, what is the use of uh, this demo? So, it helps us to understand the rationale of the voltage clamp technique and the voltage and time dependent properties of the sodium as well as the potassium channels. So, here the stimuli uh, control the command voltage at which the axon membrane potential is held. Okay. So, we get lots of information uh, from this experiment. Uh, first of all, we can measure the sodium and uh, potassium currents at different voltages. Then we can graph the current versus voltage relationship. We can calculate conductance versus voltage relationship. If you remember conductance maximum uh, uh, GNA is uh, um, uh, sodium uh, conductance and uh, GK is potassium conductance and their uh, G max uh, reflects uh, or is directly proportional to the actual number of sodium channels or potassium channels. Okay. We can also plot the time course of recovery of sodium channels from inactivation using a two pulse stimulus technique. Okay. And uh, the temperature dependence of uh, channels uh, can be checked out. The slowing of potassium channel activation and sodium channel inactivation with cooling decreases the action potential threshold. And this is the basis of multiple sclerosis therapy. If you remember, uh, MS uh, causes you know demyelination, it is an autoimmune disease where the body's antibodies attack its own uh, myelin and uh, you have a slowing of conduction and then finally conduction failure and it usually affects uh, uh, women in the age group of 20 to 40 Caucasian women and uh, there is no definitive therapy but if you cool uh, the body uh, you know uh, you can restore conduction uh, and this is the reason. So, we can generate a family of curves okay, by uh, uh, using a different range uh, of amplitudes and uh, we will show you this uh, in the demo. And uh, uh, this is the uh, uh, screen for the demo. 
So I shall get into the demo without any uh, further, you know. Uh, so the exercise exercises you can do different exercises. So one you can um, generate sodium and potassium voltage clamp currents, and you get, as I said, a family of voltage clamp traces uh, by using range functions. You can block sodium uh, currents with tetrodotoxin TTX and uh, potassium uh, outward currents with uh, tetraethyl ammonium, and um, see each current in isolation and you can look at potassium and sodium current voltage and conductance voltage relationships and you can also look at recovery of uh, uh, sodium channel inactivation by using two stimuli. Okay. This is the meta neuron um, uh, screen and we choose the lesson 5 which is the axon uh, voltage clamp and uh, here uh, just to go over some of these parameters. So the membrane parameters uh, on the extreme left on the top, you have the sodium equilibration potential as usual you are keeping it at 50 plus 50. Then we have uh, conductance of sodium, so GNA max and uh, this is milli Siemens per uh, centimeter squared. Okay. So that is uh, reflects the total number, it is proportional to the total number of sodium channels in the axonal membrane. Then below that you have the potassium equilibrium channel kept at a usual value of minus 77 and then you have uh, the maximum potassium conductance uh, which is 70. Okay. So uh, then you have the membrane leakage, uh, membrane leakage uh, potentials minus 55 and G leak which is um, 0 0.6. Our holding potential over here uh, command voltage is at minus 75. Okay. And uh, the stimulus one uh, we can change its parameters. Right now it is set at 1 millisecond, the width is 4 milliseconds and the amplitude, this is the one which we shall be uh, uh, modifying, minus 5 and the temperature is kept at a, uh, you know, 18 degrees centigrade. So coming to the plot below, the membrane current is the yellow trace, uh, you see an inward current and you see the outward current. The red trace uh, is the membrane potential and uh, that is what we hold it at, you know. and uh, you know we clamp it at this potential and then we release the clamp over here okay and the sodium potential is right on top and the you know equilibration potential and the uh, uh, potassium equilibration potential is in blue uh, below okay so coming to the membrane current okay so this is the membrane potential uh, which is clamped at the red line so when it's clamped you have one inward current which is if you remember the sodium current and an outward current which is the delayed rectifier or the potassium current and as soon as the clamp is released it comes back to normal. So how do we know this is a sodium current? Well we will block it with TTX and now you have only the sodium currents have been blocked uh, and you just have the delayed rectifying potassium current. So we start it again and we now block the potassium current. So now you see only the inward uh, sodium current. So sodium activation and sodium inactivation, it inactivates and even though it is held, the membrane potential is held at this uh, level, it has inactivated. Okay. So let us bring it back. So um, again uh, you can uh, vary uh, the different uh, ions, uh, ionic concentrations uh, you know uh, inside and outside the cell. Now, so basically what you are doing is you are varying the sodium equilibration potential. So let us see what happens. So we change it to 40. Okay. So it becomes much less, the inward current becomes much less. Okay. Let us go back, let us make it 20. So it becomes even less and when we uh, completely make it 0, there is a little dip, that is it. Okay. So let us go back to uh, defaults. And we can do the same thing with the potassium equilibration uh, uh, potential. So if we change this to minus 50, yeah. So you see the equilibration pot, uh, goes up, the potassium equilibration uh, current goes up and also the outward current decreases. Okay. So uh, like this you can change the different parameters, you can also change uh, the uh, potassium uh, conductance, the sodium conductance, the decrease the number of channels. So let us do that, let us make it 100. 
So what we have done over here is we have decreased the number of, effectively we have decreased the number of sodium channels. Okay. So uh, the invert current is much less because the fewer channels through which the sodium current can flow. Okay. So we restore it all to defaults and likewise uh, we uh, decrease the potassium uh, conductance and uh, the outward current decreases. The inward current remains unaffected but the outward current which goes through the potassium channel decreases. Again what we have done is we have reduced the number of potassium channels. Okay. okay. So uh, let us uh, let us do a family of curves. Okay. So we change the amplitude. Okay, uh, we have a range and now uh, we have a range, the beginning value is minus 75, the end value is plus 70 and we incremented by 10 okay. and you see this graph. We can also get a, a surface uh, plot which I do not find very helpful uh, but to get a, a graphical representation uh, in 3D you know of the different uh, command potentials. Okay. Right. So um, we can also uh, you know let us go back to uh, normal restore all to defaults. Uh, we can change the sweep duration to let us say 20. and we can have a second stimulus okay. So here uh, you have you can uh, look at the inactivation. Uh, this first stimulus you know uh, causes the inward current and the outward current. The second stimulus if it comes really close to the first one uh, it is the sodium channels are still inactivated so there is hardly any sodium uh, activity and because of that uh, hardly any inward current there is hardly any outward current okay. So, um, this is basically uh, the uh, a demo on the voltage clamp and uh, what is amazing is that if you actually uh, uh, measure a squid axon uh, and uh, look at the values uh, got by the demo they pretty much uh, you know uh, coincide and which is the amazing thing um, that uh, the mathematics the partial differential equations which govern these phenomena describe uh, what happens uh, nearly 100%. So what it means is you do not have to go to the trouble of getting a squid and doing intracellular uh, uh, experiments. You can uh, get an idea of what is happening just by doing this demo.